Hey everybody, this is Aaron from AaronsAudioCorner.com and today I'm going to review some 8-inch woofers from Audio Development and Audio Frog. <music> Typically I like to review speakers one by one, but given my time crunch and given the fact that I have two woofers that are very similar in nature as to how they're intended to be used, I decided I would lump these two together and do a quick review. I'll go ahead and Apologize, I guess, up front for my brevity. Is that my briefness? I think that's the right word. And we're going to do also, I'd like to apologize for my appearance because I didn't have time to uh, shower and shave. I've been working like a madman doing all of this stuff and then actually working my real job. So I'm trying to get as much done as I can. And I hope you guys will forgive me for any errors that I have here. I'm not even going to going to try to edit this thing. I'm just going to try to blow through this one if I can. So first up, I'm going to look at the audio development. This is the SW800, again, from audio development. It is an 8-inch woofer. Their spec is a little bit weird. It states that its uh, frequency response range is 40 hertz to 1200 hertz, I believe. But based on my data, it's more intended to be used as maybe like an 8-inch subwoofer or an 8-inch mid-bass. And hold it up let you guys check it out yeah it is dual voice coil i believe it is 3.2 ohm per coil so you can wire it as 6.4 ohm nominal load or you can wire it down to 1.6 ohm nominal load and then we have the audio frog gs8 nd2 which is a very compact little 8 inch woofer this is the back of it it also is a dual voice coil, and this one, I believe, is 2 ohm on the terminal, so you can wire it to a 4 ohm nominal load, or you can wire it down to a 1 ohm nominal load. And that's it. Now, I, I want to go ahead and state up front, the GS8ND2, per Andy, per Andy Waymeyer of Audio Frog, so the owner of Audio Frog, um, this is intended to be used... I believe he says as a woofer, certainly not anything above 300 hertz. The spec sheet here, which I have on hand, states that. And then it also provides a lot of specs for how to use it, what enclosure size and tuning, all sorts of things. So make sure you go to my site if you'd like to check this out because currently, uh, at least as of right now, this woofer is not on uh, the Audio Frog website, so you can't find the specs just yet. So right now all we have is what I've copied and, and posted to my website. But I would imagine that that'll be up pretty soon on their site. And I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right into this data now. And I should have used my turning chair, but I didn't. First off, let's do the audio development SW800. And let's see here. So $900 a pair is uh, retail price for these. Pictures, pictures, uh, sensitivity, the things that we care about other than you know the, the main TS parameters it's uh, it's somewhat of a lightweight cone I think it's 45 uh, grams on the on the cone uh, the nominal sensitivity is about 86 87 DB at one watt and let's see uh, you can also wire it down get a little bit higher sensitivity and keep going so the linear excursion this is measured per an IEC what is it six two four five eight okay yeah six two four five eight so this is actually an industry standard that Clipple uses and that is written and it provides you with how you are supposed to determine the quote linear excursion now the linear excursion is based on a set of thresholds of distortion you can use one of two parameters and I've used both in this method the first parameter is for a maximal 10% total distortion, either through total harmonic distortion or intermodulated distortion. And that is generally used for woofers, midwoofers, stuff like that. And then for subwoofers, it's, I don't know if it's the standard, but it's becoming more standard, is to use a 20% total harmonic distortion threshold, which basically just means that the parameters are more relaxed. So you would have more linear excursion with a 20% THD spec than you would with a 10% THD spec. So on my site, the limitation for this AD is 2.3 millimeters one way, which is very, very low. That is due to the inductance uh, displacement limitation. And that again is at a 10% uh, 
distortion, total harmonic, intermod distortion, and in this case it would be intermod distortion. And wiring it up to a lower resistance doesn't change the distortion values there. The linear X max is still the same. Now, if I relax those parameters and, and increase it to a 20% THD um, limitation, that puts me up to 4.3 millimeters one way. That's really, really low. Um, that's really, really low. So I'm going to keep going. And these are all the specs for, you know, the, the inner workings, the motor, the suspension, the inductance. I'm not going to get into that because I don't want to spend too much time on those kind of things. I really want to jump straight into. So this is the on-axis linearity and response. I'm going to blow this window up. You can see in this case, I put a mean SPL range from 40 to 300 hertz because this again is, is more like a woofer mid bass as opposed to a mid woofer mid range. And with that, my mean SPL is about 86 dB at 2.83 volts. And again, this is wired at the higher resistance, which is counterintuitive when I say that, but it's basically the, the six ohm resistance is wired in series. And it has a peak at about 100 hertz and it falls off on both sides so it's down 3 db from the mean at 43 hertz and at about 300 hertz so if you put this speaker in an enclosure to increase the low end which i imagine you would want to do that's going to boost it up a little bit and i have some suggestions down at the bottom which we can get into the on and off, off axis profile are really quite good um, Unfortunately, again, the speaker just has a very high inductance value, and because of that high inductance, the high frequency is severely limited, so it just starts rolling off very, very early. So this is absolutely, this is absolutely not intended to be used more than 300 hertz tops. Um, we'll keep going, and then we're going to get into the distortion. So I'm providing a GIF, GIF, however it's pronounced. And basically what this is telling you is based on harmonic distortion. So when you play one tone and you measure the harmonic of that tone, how high is that harmonic in level? This tells you what that equates to. And in general, a lot of people will say 3% THD is kind of the maximal. It really depends on the music content that you're listening to. For example, if you have a whole lot of things going on in music, then you may not be able to hear a 3% a fundamental or 3% harmonic of, let's say, 50 hertz over high high frequencies um so it it kind of depends but in general we're just going to stick with that three percent and that's what i provide in my measurement as a reference point i also provide one percent for those people who think that they can hear one percent thd and in a nutshell what this is telling you is that as you get to higher output levels again based on the mean output level below about 200 hertz i'm going to say the distortion is well above 3% THD, so well above 3% total harmonic distortion, which is the sum components of all the in order component or components of distortion, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. etc. And somebody just messaged me. Let's see if I can mute this. All right. Intermodulated distortion is what you get when the speaker is moving forward and backwards and playing multiple tones at the same time. And in, in this case, intermod I test with two tones. And I'm going to create a video that talks more about this, but basically it's the next step up from harmonic distortion testing. And in this case, the IMD, um, this one's kind of funky. So I'm going to say it's reasonable. There's, it's, it's above 20 dB, but you're not going to be playing it above two or 300 hertz. And I think you're probably going to be playing it with a crossover most likely. Uh, if you are playing it as a mid bass. So in doing that, you're gonna lower the distortion to, uh, again, maybe around negative 10 dB. I mean, obviously the lower, the better. I can't tell you, hey, this number is absolutely the highest you need to go to. It's, it's very much like the threshold of audibility for harmonic distortion. You're gonna hear some distortions more than you will others, but I will say that IMD distortion, uh, which is a bit redundant, IM distortion is more prominent, more easy to hear uh, because it creates multiple artifacts at the same time and those multiple artifacts can sound very grainy. And by artifacts, I mean if you're playing 100 hertz, then you're gonna be, um, and you're playing 30 hertz at the same time, then you're gonna get the sum and the difference of those. So you would get 100 plus 30, so 130, and then 100 minus 30, so 70 hertz. So you would get two of those tones next to 100 hertz at the same time because you're also playing 30 hertz. So it creates a lot of different sounds and 
I'm going to get into that in a different video, but for now, let's just say that Intermod isn't great, but it isn't terrible. I mean, obviously, I would like I would like less. I may change my my stance on this at a later date once I become more and more familiar with the thresholds of my own hearing and maybe try to understand what more people are, are capable of hearing in terms of IMD. So don't don't hold me to that. Allow me some room to come back to that later, please. All right. Uh, the maximum long-term SPL. So this is basically where I test in two separate ways. And the first test, I'm setting it up with a pass band from 80 to 1600 hertz. I know I said earlier you shouldn't play this past about 300 hertz. I conduct this test this way because I conduct a whole lot of other speaker tests. And if I have a different test for every other speaker, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to go crazy. So uh, it is what it is. And then my second test is 40 to 3200 hertz. There's a reason for that. I listen to my site. I'll make it clear in another video. I'm not going to get into that here. Basically, the results of that test are within the thresholds that I've set, the maximum SPL for 80 to 1600 hertz is about 97 dB. And then if you relax that, or if you, I guess, opposite of relax that um, and make it from 40 to 3200, then it's 91 dB. Uh, it's not that loud. There's a lot of, let's see here, compression and distortion. Uh, distortion is really the issue around 200 hertz. So that's going to be a problem. And I'm going to get back to that. My bottom line, look, I'm just going to be flat. For $900, for $900, you can definitely do better. Uh, if you wanted to use it just as a subwoofer, if you're going to say, hey, I'm not using a mid-bass, so you know I'm not going to get terrible performance as a mid-bass because I'm only using a sub. There are definitely, there's got to be other 8-inch subwoofers out there that have more linear excursion than this and lower distortion. Uh, and then for mid-bass reason, the Don Audio, 172 which recently comes to mind because i just tested it uh within like the past month that's a better mid bass driver namely because it has a higher sensitivity so you can get a little bit louder uh without without giving a lot of distortion as long as you use a proper uh high pass filter so if you expect to run it down to like 40 hertz then yeah that might be a problem for the don but if you're using like 60 70 80 then the don is definitely going to be better at least from what i recall and yeah so that's going to do it here uh, although I do, I guess, need to mention the enclosure. I came up with uh, half a cubic foot will get you a, a tuning frequency of about 40 hertz, which is that's okay, but it's not great. And then a sealed enclosure of about 0.43 cubic feet will get you a QTC of 0.7. So a smallish enclosure, and um, if you do that, you'll increase the low-end frequency response. But again, really, really high inductance, very, very low linear excursion. For $900, you can definitely do better. Don't buy this speaker. All right, now I'm going to jump back a page and we're going to get to, well, I was going to jump back a page. Let's see, drive units. We're going to get to the audio frog. Now the audio frog has caused me a lot of grief lately because I, I said that for a mid bass, I'm not really fond of it. I think you could do better. Um, but let me try to do some backtracking here and I'm not even going to call it backtracking. I mean, it, the data, the data is what it is. It's the truth. Uh, I rely on it very heavily to tell the story that, that I want to know. And in this case, Andy has said that this woofer is one of the reasons it's made is because it will fit in BMWs and fit in the periodic enclosures that are underneath the seat of BMWs. And it will also, I believe, fit in certain Porsches, uh, I guess 911 or 914s. I don't know. I'm, I'll never have the experience of driving a Porsche or a, or a BMW unless it's been like totaled and somebody just gave it to me. But anyway, um, so with that in mind, yeah, it can fit in a really small enclosure. And let's see, let's see what the specs say. Andy says on his specs for a sealed enclosure, um, 0.25 to 0.4 cubic feet. I don't know what the F3 is related to that. Uh, I think that I did measure that a little bit or talk about that later on. And then for a ported enclosure, it's uh, 0.5 to 0.75 cubic feet is, is the size here. So, you know, that, that's... That's relatively small, I guess. I mean, it's really not a whole lot smaller than the, the AD, at least according to the Win ISD modeling that I did. So let's blow through this. And these are all of Andy's suggested uh, enclosure sizes. I tend to defer to the manufacturer on, on enclosure size recommendation. You can obviously take, your, take the measurements that I'm providing and create your own uh, enclosure modeling simulations if you wanted to do that. Uh, FS is 35, QT is about 0.5, so for a door, that would be okay if you wanted to put in a door. 
Um, the nominal sensitivity is about 81 to 83 dB, depending on which wiring you have it at, uh, which in my opinion is low. And let's see here. So the maximal linear excursion per the IEC standard achieved from using the Clipple spec or the Clipple machine is 4.2 millimeters one way. So that's about par for the course with the other eight, seven, eight inch woofers that I've measured recently, although it's, it's not... So the ScanSpeak Illuminator, the 18WU, and the Purify uh, speaker that I tested recently, which is around here somewhere, I don't have it on me right now, uh, both of those have more lean excursion. The, the ScanSpeak 18WU has 9 millimeter one-way uh, excursion, Clipple verified through numerous sources myself, uh, their own factory, and uh, Vance Dickinson wrote about it in Voice Call Magazine. So uh, nothing so far has beaten the scan in, in terms of 7 or 8 inch woofers that I've seen. So. Four millimeters is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. And let's see, if you change the limits to about 20% THD, then that increases to 7.6 millimeters one way. And these are the offsets and the symmetries. I'm going to keep going. On axis linearity. This has been a sore spot, the 80 hertz dip, but I have measured it on this clipple stand in my room. And I have also measured the same speaker on an entirely different setup held in place by, on, an, on a huge baffle wall in my garage, held in place by, you know, you attach it to the baffle via the, the screw holes. Um, but then on the clipple stand, it's actually held in by clamp and the clamp comes down on top of the motor, so it holds it like that. Two entirely different methods of measurement yielded the exact same impedance shape and the same FR dip at around 80 hertz, so I'm trusting that data and based on the 40 to 300 hertz region, I have a mean SPL of about 80.1 dB. If you were to ignore the 80 hertz dip, then you'd probably be looking closer to uh, maybe 83, which the LNOM from the TS parameters tells us that anyway. So it's not anything we don't already know. Severe breakup, uh, resonance mode, whatever you want to call it, I don't know, above 500 hertz and... Yeah, you absolutely would not use a speaker above 500 hertz. But again, the manufacturer says specifically 30 to 300 hertz. So it's your fault if you want to run it past that. The data suggests 300 hertz is, is a reasonable number for a low pass. So if you wanted to run it up to that as a mid base, you could. But based on the sensitivity, I would suggest you look elsewhere for a dedicated mid base for a door speaker or something like that. Again, the Don MW172 would... would be a good exception to that um, as far as enclosure size I don't know I didn't model it but if you're putting in a door you don't need an enclosure so if you need an enclosure a small enclosure then yeah this guy's probably uh, well if you need a small enclosure you could use it I'm still not going to recommend it for a small enclosure but you know whatever you don't come at me distortion wise the problem here again is a low sensitivity so as you crank up the output the distortion increases Using a high pass filter absolutely um, mitigates the high distortion on the low end, but with this being touted as a woofer, keep that high distortion on the low end in mind if you want to use it as a subwoofer or something close to FS, if you're going to cross it very, very low. Keep that in mind. Uh, Intermod distortion, let's see here. Using it down to FS, uh, the intermod is above... 10 dB once you get above 500 hertz, but below that you're around 10 dB. So it's kind of on par with the AD SW800. And then if you cross it at 80 hertz, the intermod at 96 dB is below 10 dB or above 33%, or I'm sorry, below 33%. So um, not great, but not terrible. But if you're going to push it a little bit higher, then obviously that distortion value is going to increase too. Multi-tone testing, same way I tested the AD, same band passes, and I arrived at 94 dB max SPL based on the 80 to 1600 hertz region and 91 dB based on the 40 to 3200 hertz region. And I know you're going to say, nobody's going to play it up 3200 hertz. Well, it failed at 60 hertz due to compression at 91 dB. So, yeah, not great. Um... Let's see here. I did model this in WinISD. I came up with 0.45 cubic feet to get a QTC of 0.7 with an F3 of about 46 hertz. So, okay. And then I make sure to mention to 
refer to the manual or the manufacturer spec. Uh, you can use the one on my site right now or when they get theirs up, you can look at that there. All of this says is it's a low sensitivity driver, um, best used in niche cases where you have a BMW with an underseat mounting system or you have a Porsche and it's got like an enclosure in the door or something. Some of those specific cases that Andy mentioned, but otherwise, my recommendation is the same as with the audio development SW800, which is if you need a regular run of the mill mid bass, then you want something else besides this GS8 ND2 because it's not for you. The, uh, the peaking nature around 100 Hertz, it's about five dB drop from 100 Hertz to 300 Hertz. And the, the peaking nature doesn't lend itself great to a target curve. So let's say you got a target curve and you're going to try to cross over at about, I don't know, maybe 80 hertz or 60 hertz, somewhere in that region. Uh, it's already starting to fall off around that 80 hertz region or after, after 100 hertz on the low end. It's already falling off. So that's going to be kind of tougher to work with as opposed to a speaker that's more linear, that has a flatter response above 100 hertz because it's not doing a bell-shaped kind of deal. And... Yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry if I, if I upset you with the review. The data is what it is. I'm giving you my opinion on the data. Manufacturers obviously will have different opinions and get what works for you. And if the data indicates that this is something you like or if you still want to try it because it will fit your particular install, go for it. But again, in terms of general mid bass, these aren't the kind of woofers that you're going to need. These are not the woofers that you were looking for. And you'll want to probably stick with something more traditional mid-bass. Again, the MW172, which isn't the greatest woofer, but it's a better mid-bass uh, than these guys if you're planning on doing the typical 80 to 300 hertz region or something along those lines. So that's it. I hope you guys learned something. And I'm going to go put my fire suit on because it's already been a day. And uh, I appreciate you watching. And yeah, thanks. Bye.